the next topic that is the present problem nato and russia what is nato nato the definition as you see it is north atlantic treaty organization so it is a north atlantic treaty that means the countries in the which are in the neighborhood of the both sides of the north atlantic ocean so those countries has formed an alliance so that is called as you know the nato what is the purpose if you see that is a purpose is a it's a military alliance or political alliance when it was founded it was founded in 1949 that is after world war 2 why it was formed it was formed because of the specific actions of the soviet union right so we will see clearly what is soviet union and all this thing what are the we you know at present what is the nato's membership the nato's membership you can see that uh, by region wise so the north atlantic mean this is the north atlantic ocean right so the countries on this you know both sides of this uh, atlantic ocean are members of this organization so the membership you can see that from 1949 since its inception even now also the members are being continuously added to this group called as nato right see the the latest is 2020 the north macedonia the country uh, took the membership of nato then the the next thing is what is soviet union the soviet union as we all know this is ussr you know we used to call the short name is soviet union but the the complete abbreviation is union of soviet socialist republics so the name here what is important is the word called as socialist that means here these are the countries which has kind of formed an alliance or formed an union and all those you know all those countries the common theme of you know the point of the uh, the you know the merging between all the countries is the idea of economic principle that is socialism so all the countries which are following the the socialism as an economic policy in their countries they had formed their union that is called as soviet union this soviet union was centered around the russia so in this group the the group you know for every group there should be a nodal point that what is the country that uh, a flag bearing country the flag bearing country in the soviet union is russia okay so you can see the total members in the soviet union used to be at one point of time that is maximum 15 members so all of them you can see these are eastern european countries and also southern you know southern european countries and some of them are you know the north asian countries also okay so all the 15 countries if you see geographically they have you know this spread or you know this spread eastern part of europe southern part of europe and northern part of asia northern part of asia the capital for this particular union is moscow the moscow mean that is even now the capital of today's country independent country called as russia and if you see in the map the countries of ussr so these all these you know the uh, countries here the 15 countries right these are all the countries you know, the, these are all part of the the soviet union so we had seen nato is a political and a military alliance between the countries in the on the both sides of the north american the north atlantic river so as it is a military alliance that means which has some military domain that defense powers right so even the soviet union also in reaction to that uh, nato grouping right a military even this you, you know european union also has created a defense or maybe a military organization that uh, that military organization here you can see rather than an organization they have formed a an alliance that alliance we can see through by signing a an agreement that is called as warsaw pact warsaw is a place located in poland so in this place they you know all these 15 countries has signed this you know this treaty the treaty talks about collective defense treaty okay so at that time here you know the the collective defense treaty the countries that are signed are only seven countries soviet union and not only the soviet union the countries which are not part of the the soviet union even those countries also actually signed this particular pact that means 
to be you know to sign this warsaw pact you do not have to be a member of the soviet union okay clear so the next thing is why actually nato you know, nato has been created the nato has been clearly you know the created for the specific purpose of to guarantee the freedom and also security to whom its member countries member countries so there are two things one is that providing the freedom second thing is providing security to the member countries here we are not talking about the individuals we are talking about the countries freedom to the countries freedom to the countries for what freedom for what freedom is always about every country is independent every country is sovereign sovereign means they you know every country's people can decide what they want they can elect the government right the government uh, which they want to ruled by another thing is they can decide they themselves can decide which type of economic policy will be good for them right so everything can be decided by the people of that country because that you know that country is that country's people are sovereign so if that country's people are sovereign that country should have that freedom to decide everything what is rightful or maybe what is right for the given country or maybe to the people of that country and that means here government can do anything to the satisfactory of the you know the country's people so that freedom should be available no other country can coerce the given you know given country or country's people or country's government to do in anything in against to the wishes wishes again wishes of the given country's people next thing is security security is the threat that may be coming out of that given country right to protect the borders of the given country protecting the borders of the given country we can from the external you know threat external threat means from other countries threat that is called as security providing security in against to the third countries aggression towards the the given country so this is something called to guarantee these two things to the members of this particular nato grouping right through how the mechanisms are two means the means are one is political means another one is military means what is under political means how exactly nato can make provide the provide you know the make sure that there is a guarantee of freedom and security under political purpose you can see here the not all political dimensions dimensions will be discussed under nato only the specific do you know the specific uh, relevant issues which talk, you know which are talking about the defense of the given country and security related issues about the all the countries involved in this grouping right the countries involved you know the part of this group to those countries related the defense and security related issues only be discussed under the political banner okay under political means only the defense and security related which are common and concerning all the nato members will be discussed right so that here a, you know a trust can be built and any conflict can be prevented any conflict can be prevented among the nato members or this nato member versus any non nato member okay clear so that is the political mean the second thing is a military means so this particular class actually makes this nato a powerful organization what it says is the if there is any you know dispute arises this particular you know under military means what it says that uh, rather than going for direct aggression there should be first peaceful you know try for the peaceful resolution of any dispute first there should be trying for the peaceful resolution of dispute that means without any aggression without any confrontation without any fighting between the member country between the member countries or maybe the member country versus any other country the dispute any dispute can be peacefully resolved through negotiation if those peaceful you know the uh, the negotiations fail did not find any solution then military will take over right military will take over to solve this particular crisis okay so this is something you can see that military that means the invasion or attacking another country which uh, which they see it as enemy country so towards this you know the extraordinary provision of military power right the military power the nato as part of you know the agreement it is signed article 5 right nato also have its own charter which has to be followed by the member countries under the charter article 5 talks about the principle called as collective defense collective defense what does it mean the collective defense the collective defense means if any non nato member 
attacks any single nato member country if any non nato country attacks the any nato member country then it is treated as that attack is happened on all the members of nato it is treated as all the you know attack happened on the all the members of the nato that means attack that means the reply to that particular attack should come from this organization that is grouping all the member countries will be you know taking action against the particular country which has attacked the given nato member okay so this is called as a collective defense that means all the nato member countries come to the rescue of the country which has been attacked by okay so the this is you know the extraordinary provision that is mentioned in the nato so the article 5 has it been resorted from 1949 since the day of nato is uh, conceptualized till now whether actually this particular provision has been resorted till now it has been resorted only once the nato member countries has invoked article 5 only once in its history till now that was also after 9 by 11 uh, the terrorist attacks on us soil by the osama bin laden al qaeda when it is attacked the us and then the nato member countries has invoked article 5 and they had collectively the the nato forces has invaded the afghanistan which was which used to which used to be the the you know the play you know country where from where osama bin laden actually planned this particular terrorist attack on the us soil okay so without article 5 whether nato member or nato member countries cannot do you know cannot take any action in the other countries it's not the case even without invoking article 5 nato member countries have you know this is something see article 5 talks about the direct invasion direct attack involving the direct confrontation with the enemy army okay this is direct confrontation but uh, this uh, without invoking article 5 indirectly also the nato has you know the provide you know did some kind of the invasions or maybe the defensive measures in other countries the examples if you see the specific case of syria right the syria crisis that are going on from so long since the since 2013 the in the syria crisis the nato forces directly did not involved in confrontation or fighting the the syrian government but what they did is the rebels who are fighting the syrian government to those rebels they have provided the different you know in you know different means like supplying the arms and ammunition right the intelligence information so this is indirectly somewhere in this war again nato is involved okay again here the in the specific case where russia is attacked even now also or in the previous case the in, a, in, a, in another cases where the you know the nato forces has provided the indirect support to the rebels or maybe to the parties whichever for fighting against the government suppose to you know take the case of in cuba in cuba america it is not about nato now you know cuba you know, america is indirectly providing the support to the opposition parties whichever is opposing the given government okay which government you know the us think that that is in against to the the given government cuban government is ruling in against to the wishes of the cuban people that is the what actually the choice of Uh, that is what actually the claim of us the the point here is why at all these two groupings why the two groupings has formed why, what was the origin for the the nato or maybe the ussr what is the the reason for this collision between these two groupings the one grouping the nato the the flag bearing country here is usa and here in the warsaw pact or maybe in ussr it is russia so why these two countries uh become enemies after world war 2 in world war 2 both these countries fought uh, you know on one side and actually they you know this is the you know the this is the grouping that has won the world war 2 but immediately after winning the world war 2 in fact these two countries has become the enemies so why they had become enemies it is purely one of the majorly on the one specific issue of you know ideology ideology of what the economic ideology the economic ideology means what is the economic principle that is going to be followed in the given country 
here usa has chose that you know the specific you know the ideology which will be helping the humanity or maybe country's progress is the capitalism another side here russia has believed in the you know what what can bring in the welfare to the people it is not capitalism but it is socialism capitalism it is not capitalism it is socialism so us consider socialism as a evil or maybe a threat to the capitalism so the all the you know the these countries they always believed in the free market economy and they did not believe in this you know the state led economy so in socialism it is state that is deciding everything capitalism it is the uh, the individual that is private individual they are deciding what to produce how much to produce right the how to distribute these are all will decided by the private individuals but here in socialism state will decide so the usa did not believe in the socialism and russia did not believe in the capitalism and the these countries now you know rather believing you know they on the the each other policies they started you know the appeasing other countries also to follow their own economic principle so whoever follow other countries followed this capitalism they are become the part of the usl alliance and whoever has supported you know followed the socialism as an you know the economic principle in their country they had become the part of you know the grouping in the russia russia led grouping okay so this is what is an ideological war that is called as and there are you know multiple other reasons also but the core reasons of any you know that can create a divide between usa and russia is the economic principle that is followed in their countries okay and slowly influencing the other countries to follow the same principle okay so that you can see by naturally the you, you know the usa that is north american countries and west european countries all of them they chose to follow the capitalism and they you know the thought that this will bring more benefits to the humanity okay and the, that is why all these countries they have formed and they are joined in the grouping called as came together and formed a group called as a nato and the countries which have you know started following socialism those countries came together and they have joined a grouping called as ussr okay and in this ussr the you know the defense pact is the warsaw pact so this is what is the origin for the crisis between these two countries so this is a crisis that is started after 1945 it was lasted till 1991 it was lasted till 1991 so what happened during the you know the 1945 to 1991 so during this period both these two countries were continuously opposing one another but this opposition this opposition is there was no direct confrontation there was no direct confrontation between these two countries only you know but they are almost playing the proxy wars proxy wars means somewhere in third country somewhere in third country they used to support the opposing parties so just like in the say, same case of syria in syria usa supported the rebels which are opposing the government russia supported the government russian government led by al assad right so you can see here by the choosing to fight a war rather than going with the direct confrontation they started you know oppo you know supporting opposite parties in somewhere third parties so this is something you know the period of 1945 to 1991 that period is famously called as a cold war the cold war means there is a war but there was no direct confrontation but war related everything the every other you know types of you know the fight is going on between these two countries okay so that is during the cold war period so in this cold war period completely what is one one thing that is constant is that they could not able to believe each other so the crisis during the time there was no the sink of the believing in each other countries or each other groupings okay so that is why you can see the warsaw pact is generally referred as eastern bloc because ussr and other all countries what we had seen in the Uh, member countries of the ussr all of them are located in the eastern europe southern europe or northern asia so that is eastern bloc eastern part of the world right and nato on other side you can see the western part of the world right western europe and in the north america you can see as a western bloc okay 
clear so these are the two you know groupings you can see the red is ussr the blue is the the blue you can see here these are all the countries of the nato and you can see here this is eastern bloc this is western bloc okay and what happened in 1991 because of the the you know the so so many internal failures the us you know ussr has collapsed ussr has collapsed in 1989 the you know the ussr has collapsed and as it is collapsed obviously the given defense pact warsaw pact also has broken down in 1991 given warsaw pact also has broken down because if there is no union of the given union of countries then there is no need of you know there cannot be any defense pact right okay because ussr was never an independent you know, group of independent countries all the countries those are part of ussr they have to follow the same common policies and there will be only one government in ussr okay so that ussr is implementing that what is called as the warsaw pact so this warsaw pact also broken down the major reason is by 1980s the russia has become you know so weakened economically and economically weakened country will automatically will become uh, weak with respect to defense powers also so that is why because of the you know the weakness the ussr has collapsed and disintegrated and all the countries those who are part of this particular you know the you know those who are all the member countries in the eastern bloc they started becoming independent declaring themselves as independent countries okay so that is you know, happened in 19 89 so to come out of this crisis you know economic crisis russia was facing in 1989 the russian government has come up with two specific policy that is you know those are called as you know perestroika and glasnost these two are russian words for this is about reconstruction reconstruction of the economy right and total political structure and economic structure glasnost is about openness openness means here the liberator liberalizing the economy as you know that in india 1991 there were lpg reforms so liberalization globalization and privatization liberalization part what we can see it as a openness that means here the leaving the traditional ideology of socialism slowly they started adopting the capitalist provisions okay because the socialism has failed that is why by 1989 it is not see again here it is not the ideology that is failed obviously the rulers has failed the people who were implementing the given ideology but what we finally generally say that this ideology has failed in the ussr and that's why they started opening up slowly started you know adopting capitalistic principles of see openness and reconstruction okay so the 1980s and 1990s you you know were the you know turbulent times domestically for the russia okay once ussr is broken russia has become an independent country all other you know the other countries in eastern europe has become the independent also at the time of you know the the narsa you know the ussr is being disintegrated what is the you know promise nato has been made okay so that means during the cold war you can see there was world used to have two poles one pole is us another pole is russia so these are the two powerful countries powerful like powerful countries means economically militarily they are powerful apart from that they can influence other countries you know that they can have their votes are influential in other countries also that means they can dictate terms to the other countries they have that kind of power that is the powerful countries means so that power you know being the another pole during cold war after disintegration russia has become any other normal developing country and it uh, could not able to withstand the face the uh, give the stiff competition to the us power okay so post 1991 the world has become unipolar world so unipolar means in world now the only powerful country is us there is no no other country is powerful as usa or can compete or can contest the us power so here during the time the when the disintegration is happening the weakened russia uh, when it was interacting with the nato the nato has made a promise to the russia saying that the whatever the present membership 
is nato is having that is only western europe so we will not be going or maybe coming into or accepting the members from the eastern europe we will not be accepting the members into the nato that is countries into the nato from the eastern european part because before 1991 eastern you know european countries were around the russia okay so but here uh, the as a security assurance as a security assurance to the russia the northern us secretary has promised that there would not be any extension of nato's jurisdiction for forces would not even by 1 inch to the east from the present existing present existing means somewhere this is discussion happening in 1990 so the member countries of 1990 will not be expanded to the eastern side of the euro that is what is the promise made by the us whether nato has you know they lived up on this promise see this is only a wordly promise this is not something an agreement signed anywhere so even that is wordly promise that is been given to other country as an assurance whether the uh, country which has promised that is us whether the promise has been withheld or not whether the given country has kept the promise or not the given promise has been broken in 1995 only the the broken is during the cold war time the germany was divided into two parts east germany and west germany west germany was under the was nato member and was part of the nato okay was part of the nato but east germany was under the was part of the ussr that means that is part of the warsaw pact but when the us you know ussr is collapsed the both germany's was you know germany was unified germany was unified the unified germany right where will it you know will it be part of the nato or not so here is where they you know here the nato had a discussion or made discussion with the russian government at that point of time they you know the by giving an assurance saying that we will be accepting only east germany out of your previous ussr countries right because the germany now unified west germany you know is part of the nato obviously now the germany is unified east germany also technically should be part of the nato so here with the mutual agreement with the russia the nato accepted the membership of east germany in 1995 so it is almost like a broken promise but here at least they have you know consulted with the russian authorities at the point of time did they stop it there no here you can see again in 1999 three more countries from the eastern europe had you know added to the nato accepted the you know the membership in 2004 seven more countries southern and eastern part of europe two more in 2009 one in 2017 one in 2020 right so by 2020 you can see uh, you know the nato covers all the almost all the countries in the southern europe and most of the countries in the eastern europe so the nato's promise has not been kept here serious right so keeping this how russia views nato post 1990 we are talking about after the disintegration of the ussr who oh, you know the uh, kind of promise they had made in at the time of disintegration and what nato did after 1990 so what you know all this you know the course of events what is the russia's view russia has already you know always you know the raised its objection for nato's enlargement to the eastern europe okay but the even if the, you know if they are raised objections why did they not oppose specifically the specific question is why did they not oppose the we have discussed these reasons that in 1990s and 1980s the specific reason why they did not oppose is their economic conditions is not proper and at the time russia was very weak country and they were looking you know they have more problems domestically compared to what they can do you know what they can prove in the world right in the global politics so in the country in the in the domestic you know domestic uh, problem one is that they have to find a stable market economy market economy means open economy right so they have transition from controlled to the uncontrolled economy so that needs to be stabilized right again creating a robust law and order system again institutionalizing different democratic practices because till 1990 it was an authoritarian country right authoritarian country there were no elections okay so only the head of the given socialist party will be automatically the head of the given given state okay yes 
so automatically those you know the but after 1990 they started conducting slowly elections after the disintegration russia has become independent they started conducting elections okay so this is you know that is why they are you know the busy with you know the set you know setting uh, the country uh, finding an order in the the domestic uh, policies with respect to politics or maybe economy wise or maybe law and order wise they are they have more work in the inside the country compared to the global politics so that's why they did not oppose and uh, even if they want to oppose they did not have the given economic power okay they do not have enough resources that's why they chose you know they were only objecting it but they could not able to oppose militarily okay see that is but what happened in 2000 by 2000 russia started becoming you know the stronger country with the higher growth they have started projecting the higher growth continuously 7% growth rates in the 2000 decades and also the time where putin has got elected the present president got elected to you know came to the power as a president of russia so now the putin is a hardcore nationalist another thing is russia is becoming you know almost stabilized domestically and economically also it is reviving it is slowly reviving country you know it is reviving so this is why here now the like in the cold you know cold war time like in the cold war time putin and russia started exerting it they you know started asserting their power in global politics and when they started asserting their global powers now star nato started again feeling you know the pain that the russia is becoming more stronger so like ussr pays you know the created uh, problem the security or defense problems in the cold war time that might repeat even in 2000s also that is why you can see in 2007 they have accepted the more members and 2009 and 2017 2020 it is continuously going because till since 20 2000 putin is in power and he is continuously you know the uh, you know issuing different kinds of statement directly opposing the nato's aggression and and also another thing he is continuously asserting the russia's role as one of the global power in the world okay so that is why here nato started expanding its membership to the eastern part even to the borders of russia border to the borders of the russia now with that expansion the what is the specific problem russia is facing here the specific problem russia is facing here is the first thing is russia want a global you know a role in the global order just like they had in the cold war time there was a bipolar world one pole is russia but after disintegration russia was not a pole right so now they want to reclaim that position that is the first objective that's why they are objecting to the russia nato's expansion if nato is expanding then russia can never become powerful right the because all the member countries surrounding the russia they are joining nato then it is difficult for russia to exert any kind of defense or military power right the next thing is being nato is you know powerful country as soon as any member joins the member you know the joins the nato then russia you know the nato will deploy the establishes military bases where the permanently military is deployed and continuously operated from those places and these military base the army is a allied army allied army means members drawn from army people drawn from all the members of nato and deployed in the all the countries in the different military bases all the countries those are part of the nato and also it also deploys the arms and ammunition for immediate reaction if any immediate reaction should be meted out right the arms and ammunition also will be deployed in these military bases okay and in some cases not only the normal arms and ammunition even the nuclear arsenal also might be deployed in these countries so all the countries surrounding russia are part of nato in those you know uh, in those countries nato military bases nato you know the army deploy you know nato's army arms and ammunition and the nuclear power surrounding the russia so that means it can never be become a powerful country in the world right so that's why they are objecting <clears throat> and another thing is whether the, the two most neighbor countries that is georgia and ukraine those who are sharing the land borders with the uh, russia 
what is the you know member status of these two countries these two countries are not part of nato and in 2008 they applied for the membership of the nato that we want to be part of the nato and uh, because they are facing specific threat of raising russia is a threat to these two countries that's what because uh, raising russia will start dictating to the terms to these two countries that is not you know that is they do not like that and they want independence right independence policy making so in nato there is always an independence is available to the, all the member countries with respect to domestic policy making okay because all the countries in you know part of nato are the one of the condition they should be democratic there should be democratic election there should not be any authoritarian government only then the membership is allowed and nato also has shown interest to accept these two mem you know countries membership because these two countries are right you know the at the border you know the at the outset of russia adding these two countries to the nato will have great advantage in thwarting any of the russia's aggression going ahead okay so here when these two countries were applied the immediately russia attacked the georgia say that you know how you are going to be part of the you know apply for the nato's membership so after that attack then you know georgia has become a neutral they did not apply for the nato membership but they never attacked the ukraine but ukraine was continuously you know the showing its interest to join the the nato but uh, nato did not accept because if they accept it might directly lead to confrontation with the russia because russia was continuously issuing the statement if you accept the membership of like ukraine then you are directly inviting the threat like you are directly face you know attacked the we we treat it as you attacked the russia so there will be a war so that's why nato never accepted the ukraine by looking at the larger consequences and if you see the present why you know the you know the ukraine want to join specifically the nato in the ukraine the total country is divided broadly into the eastern and western parts eastern parts which are close to the russia there most of the people are supportive of the you know the want to be part of you know the closure to russia they want to be to you know the ukraine to be close with russia but western part of the ukraine they want close close relations with the western world not with russia they don't like russia okay so here is where you can see the aspirations of the people itself is divided based on the regions the eastern people towards the pro russia and western people you know western ukrainian people are pro european union or maybe pro nato okay western countries so here the in this process what russia did is russia supported the the eastern people right the rebels which are fighting because whenever elections do happen the government which is you know elected is always pro nato or pro european government okay so most of the time post you know disintegration of soviet union the most of the time the rulers of the ukraine are the always pro you know the western world not the pro russia but here is where the the that policy was not liking by the people in the eastern region and to these people russia was continuously supporting them through different means to accept pressure on the ukrainian government to not to go you know file for you know the go and join the nato and to take policies in so you know as pro russia okay those you two ukrainian territories eastern territories are specifically are donetsk and lushan the luhansk and the doshank these two are the eastern most regions which are bordering the russia wherein most of the people are russian speaking people most of them are russian speaking people to these people what russia did is they have you know recently they have recognized it as separate regions also what is recognizing separate regions means the moscow that means russia when they want to interact with these two you know regions they do directly interact with the heads of this particular regions they do not they not directly deal, they do not deal with the ukrainian government and ukrainian government also they are they not interacting with the russia you know, the russia right russian government if they are you know ukrainian government if they are talking about any of these two regions russia will not accept it okay so that is what here means the special you know separate region means anything recognized separate region by russia means with respect to these two countries regions the direct negotiations will be with the heads of these particular regions okay clear and the russia you know the ukraine fear is at any point of time suppose if there is a confrontation confrontation between ukraine and russia 
definitely russia is not as powerful as russia you know the ukraine is not powerful as russia so if you see the russia's defense budget is almost 10 times the ukraine and the ukrainian army is less than half of the total russia's army so it cannot withstand if there is any direct war okay so to secure its place that you know its independence its freedom domestic you know its freedom of domestic policy russia want you know the ukraine wanted to be part of the nato right so that there is something called as a collective security provision article 5 nato forces will come to the rescue of the ukraine if there is any future attack that is the reason why ukrainian ukraine want to join the nato okay so even before the you know the present attack the russia's invasion in the the present uh, attack in the uh, on the ukraine before that as i told in 2008 they took military action against the georgia because they filed you know for the membership of nato then georgia has become the neutral country and uh, in 2014 what they did is russia has annexed one of the province of ukraine that is the crimean peninsula so this is called you know crimean peninsula so it is actually you know ukrainian part of land but what they did is in 2014 the as ukrainian government is continuously veering up towards the the western world the russia what they did is they had conducted the the elections here by conducting elections here the the finally the crimea was annexed to russia post so this is something that is not accepted by the world countries because if you are if any country is accepting any land into their own country right they have to follow a law that is mentioned in the united nation that law is you need to have clear permission from the given country under whom till now it was under control so that means here clear you know crimea was under the control of the ukrainian government that is part of the ukraine country but here by conducting some kind of referendum in the 2014 russia on its own without having any agreement or consent with the ukrainian government they have occupied and annexed with the russia so this is something violative of international law this is considered as an aggression towards the another country okay clear so this is something that you know the russia had done something extraordinary in 2014 so all these things many of the time russia are doing these things regularly after 2000 it is because to exert its power and also for the mr putin to show him you know showcase him as the most powerful person and to get continuously get re-elected in the given country okay that is why from 2002 till now he never lost any single election till now <clears throat> And finally, why at all Russia invaded now? The Russia invasion, it, you can see, after this annexation in 2014, then Ukrainian fear, you know, Ukrainian government's fear has become even more bigger that one day Russia might attack the Ukraine. So because of that fear, now Ukraine started accepting pressure on the NATO and the European Union that please accept my membership, which is pending before you from 2008. Because here is a direct threat that is coming from Russia, okay, and that is the the so here the Ukrainian government has to, you know has started showing its intention of more joining the NATO, and this is not liked by the Russia. Another thing is even NATO also the relation between the NATO countries and the Russia also deteriorated after 2014. It is because they had followed something you know they had did Russia had did something in against the international law and that is not accepted by the the nato and that is why you can see the direct you know the contact between the practical cooperation between the nato and the russia has been suspended since 2014 so that means relation between these two also the nato grouping and the russia also deteriorated after 2014 okay but russia always considers ukraine is russia and russia is ukraine and they always consider Ukraine as part of the Russia. They never see it as the Ukrainian people and Ukrainian government never treat Ukraine as an independent country. They always see that it is rightfully, they, you know, belong, you know, part of the Russia. And just before the invasion, what is the, you know, the, you know, Russia's demand? What Russia demanded specifically is, you know, dating back to 1994, whatever was the membership of the NATO, right? The NATO should be reverted back reverted back to that membership that means whatever the members were added to the nato after 1997 1997 those members should be removed from the nato grouping and it should be going back and limiting itself to the western part of the europe 
that means it is asking that what you have promised in 1990s we will not come an inch towards the eastern part of the europe but you can see here you can see all the eastern european countries are made you know the given membership in nato after 1997 so the russia has clearly demanded that the nato membership has to be receded back to the 1997 level and you can see the only countries that are not part i uh, by you know from the 2014 standpoint of view the the only country that is now you know the only countries which are bordering the russia which are not part of nato is sweden finland belarus ukraine okay only these are the four countries which are having borders with the russia are not members of the nato remaining all the members in near region are part of the russia are part of the you know sorry are part of nato grouping okay now here the now they have invaded officially after invasion what are the you know specific objectives as claimed by the russia russian government the specific objective initially they claimed is first they want to overrun total ukraine that means they want to take over the control of the total ukrainian land okay by their military and next thing is to depose of its government because the government is pro western pro nato pro european union they want to remove that government okay and another thing is by removing the government they want to make sure that ukraine will not be become a neutral country will never show its desire to show, to join the alliance of nato right that is the specific to depose the government and to overrun the ukraine the first and foremost you know the most important thing they should be doing is they should be occupying the capital city the keep the capital city of ukraine keep that should be if they occupy it then maybe you can depose the government it looks like that you have almost overrun the ukraine but they could not able to do it they could not able to do it another thing is what exactly russia is aiming from the present invasion the first thing is you can see for the present invasion there is a huge domestic support for that most of the russian people also want that russia to become a powerful resurgent power as like in cold war and to that invasion is one of the thing so they have clear you know the people are supporting it next thing is during you know the the previous the us you know the president the donald trump regime the relation between the usa and its traditional allies in the western europe has deteriorated bit okay the cooperation even at the nato also the cooperation uh, he has weakened all the you know the uh, the events of cooperation between the us and all the western countries the donald trump has taken certain decisions that which has weakened the relationship between right the usa and the other all western Euro- european allies so this you know the, now this uh, deterioration of this relationship between these uh, two usa and the other countries now the you know mr biden is trying to ameliorate and trying to bridge you know trying to heal those damages done by the previous the president and as any way but uh, the relationship that means here the the interaction between the the closeness between us and these countries is not so close as like in the cold war time okay and this is the time that is advantages to russia if they attack the countries like ukraine right and another thing is the putin also have its own selfish need that you know in 2024 there are general election to which he want to increase this popularity to get reelected again right and uh, the you know the another thing what happened is the initial aim that they want to overrun and they want to occupy this keep the capital city they could not able to do the russian army what they did is they later on changed their goal post now the goal post is liberating this donbas region the donbas is the inclusion of these two provinces the donetsk region and luhansk region these two regions together in the eastern part they are you know it is called as a donbas region okay so his aim now he is saying that i want to liberate these two regions out of the control of the ukrainian government located in kyiv okay on this two on this specific region okay as part of it the important you know defense uh, port on the ukraine mariupol was recently occupied by the defense you know russian defense forces so the goal post has been changed why he is changing is he is claiming that post 2014 ukraine during you know the crimean peninsula annexation by russia these you know the people in this particular region rebels supported the russia's cause in against to the ukraine so that is why here 
the russia is claiming that post 2014 the russia you know ukrainian government is deliberately taking the you know the uh, taking action or maybe the uh, genocides against the the specific uh, people in the given country okay sorry in the given region so that is why we want to liberate the uh, people of these you know this you know of this region out of the the misruling of the ukraine or suppression or genocide but these are all only lies or claims but this is not true ukraine government never done this thing okay next what is the nato's response for the ukraine invasion of russia here nato the ukraine has asked to speedily accept my you know my country's request to be part of russia so that article 5 can be invoked but russia did not accept it okay so even now ukraine is not part of nato so as ukraine is not part of nato obviously nato will not send its troops right so nato will not send its troops that is why it has never sent any troops but like it happened in syria they are what they are doing is they are supporting indirectly the one support what you know the indirect support what they are providing is they have sent different you know the planes war planes and different warships right uh, to uh, to the uh, supply to the ukraine so that they can fight with the russian army okay better the russian army and another thing here is to create as a deterrent for the you know to the russia to not to you know escalate the the confront you know region of confrontation beyond ukraine to any part of to not to take this war to any part of the europe what nato did is it has amassed you know it has amassed the the large battalions in the countries which are bordering the russia and which are member you know the countries which are part of which are nato members in these nato member countries right which are very close to russia in these countries the army deployment you know the they have amassed the deployed huge army right so that it will act like a deterrent for russia not to spread this war to any part of the europe not to spread the war to any part of the europe and nato also clearly has said what kind of support they are providing their support is one is that they are providing different kinds of equipment to defend itself like planes or maybe warships right and also financial support because at present you know no financial activity is happening because of the war in the eastern part of the ukraine and because of it now the nato uh, countries is providing different kinds of financial support also to the uh, you know the ukraine so this is something here nato in sympathizing with this you know the ukrainian cause they are actually in providing indirect support so here in this you know the total process is only russia to be blamed for this aggression that is not the case for the russia's aggression the main reason reason is that the what is the promise they had you know the made by the us in 1989 they did not kept it they had continuously increased the kind of you know the insecurity created insecurity for the russia by keep on accepting the membership of the countries in the eastern europe that is what they could not have done see during cold war time they had a grouping that is fine because to accept to create it like a balance of power to the russia's ucss or power the nato have maybe there was a balance of power right so that there will not be any war okay so but if this you know after ussr disintegration there was no such problem of that the you can you know the russia problem but even then russia was you know the nato was continuously expanding and this continuous expansion has continue you know has created a kind of animosity or kind of insecurity right in the russian people or in the russian government and this insecurity has led to right annexation of crimean peninsula after annexation of the crimean peninsula ukrainian fears has you know increased that russia might attack my you know my country at any point of time and because of it you can see the the cold war type of aggressions has reverted back again back to the picture it is because of the the continuous expansion of the nato's membership that is what is being blamed regularly right it is not only the russia which is definitely russia going and resorting this kind of invasion in the 21st century it is not actually you know accepted by for any reason 
okay there is always a dialogue and forums available that could have been resorted by the russia but here that is not the case happened they have to take took the extreme step but that is not a abrupt step or unexpected this is something that environment has been created or demanded by the western countries or nato's actions after the disintegration of russia disintegration of ussr the specifically to weaken the russia the nato one you know, countries has taken some measures the measure sees russia central bank have some of its asset like money uh, which is there in the western countries in the western country central banks all that money has been frozen not only money assets means it can be the foreign assets or it can be you know the gold right all these assets are which are you know central bank or russia central bank has kept with the western country central bank all of them are frozen now right that means they cannot be accessed by the russian central bank another thing is there is another mechanism which has been you know the invented by the the western countries that is swift payment transfer network under this you know the network the for the international settlement of payments right the confidential secure messages are transferred by using this medium okay it is like a whatsapp we are using we are communicating between two people by securely message sending messages so likewise when you are you know doing international transaction like i am sending a you know the i am asking the sitting in india i am asking a person in london to a bank in london right to or maybe an indian sbi bank asking a bank in london to transfer the money to some other person sitting in london to how do you communicate by the sbi in india to the london bank this is something called as a swift payment transfer network here is where securely right end to end messages will be transferred from the sbi bank to the other bank so this is what is actually the bedrock for the all international payments and settlements okay creating a medium and uh, the next thing is the western countries the especially the european countries and even the some part russia and uk are they are dependent upon the export of russian you know the oil and gas from russia and what us did is they have banned the import of russian oil and gas it is they could able to ban it because the their dependency on the russian oil and gas is only a fraction it is only 3% or 5% of the total energy consumption of the us that's why they banned it but european countries could not able to do it because most of their energy needs is being met from this supply of russia so that is why here rather than banning it what they did is they aimed they aim to cut the gas import because they are not importing oil nowadays the european countries are not heavily using oil they had more converted into the gas based energy sources so by cutting down the gas import you know they, they are what they aimed is they want to cut down the gas imports by two thirds compared to the previous you know the previous year within a year and they are also working on phased oil embargo that means they are want to go for the continuous phasing down of usage of russian oil and uk specifically mentioned that by end of 2022 they will not be using any of the russian oil that is what these are aims that is not immediately they had done something like us has done okay so by doing all these things because oil and the russia gas is the the biggest commodities which can do, which are bringing the which are actually supporting the domestic economy of russia if these exports has decreased that means the income of the russian government decreases so to weaken the economy economically russia these uh, measures has been taken by the nato countries and russian airlines did not give the permission you know, barred from uh, access in the air space over these countries all the european union countries uk us and canada that means european airlines cannot run operations to the western part of the world they cannot use the even the fly zone space also okay they cannot fly over these countries to any other country also okay another thing is sanctions has been imposed on the putin and all the associates who are uh, you know part of his total war process on all those people the sanctions were imposed right sanctions were imposed means nobody can do business with them they cannot do business in the western countries and if anybody does in against to the sanctions on that particular person and country also western countries will impose sanctions sanctions is like this which are actually hurting the given country next what actually happened after the invasion after the invasion 
the whatever the the previous proposition of the the kind of you know the you know the not stronger relation between the usa and the other country usa and the western european countries now the relationship has become more cemented it has become more stronger next thing two more countries which are not part of the the nato but having the border with the russia that is finland and the sweden these two countries officially you know applied for the membership of nato officially applied for the membership of nato these two countries have a traditional neutrality even during you know the world war 2 time even after the you know during the cold war time they never even during the cold war time they never chosen any of the groupings neither nato grouping neither ussr grouping they have been completely neutral but here is a situation this russian attack has created fears or insecurity for these countries also now they started you know they finally uh and you know the applied for the membership in nato and uh, you can see that the what is you know if we accept even finland and sweden what do you know the how do how do we can see that whether it will act as a deterrent or it might create the the fear mongering on the russia as like they, they you know they were feeling before russia you know the ukraine invasion see here the something that you know what we are continuously saying until now the major problem is the soviet union fear is that uh, if any border country become the member you know member of the nato a member of a nato the nato forces will be deployed in those countries and not only that nuclear arsenal will also be deployed right at the border of the ukraine within a striking range so this is something what is creating insecurity in the russian people and the russian government and this is something that russia you know nato could have avoided not accepting the membership of the countries which are border the russia okay but another thing is that you know the people those who are supporting the the russia's the nato's expansion what they see is a stronger nato and stronger european union will act like a deterrent against the russia if that is the case why at all the one single country invaded attacked the russia attacked the ukraine right so more stronger european nato and european union rather than acting as a deterrent what it is doing is it is creating more insecurity in the russian administration and that is what is being you know leading to different conflicts like the latest one ukrainian invasion okay and in response what is the russia's response to the the membership filed by membership uh, request put upon by the finland and sweden here the russia has mentioned that we do not have any specific problem with these countries because they never pose any direct direct threat to us so that is why we do not have any problem these two countries joining the uh, joining the nato okay so and on another side nato you know these two countries also specifically you know mentioned that we are taking the membership of nato but like the other cases like in other cases in our countries we will not allow nato bases so that means nato forces will not be deployed in the sweden and finland and another thing is the nuclear weapons also will not be given place or given or you know, hosted in these two countries that is what is official statement made by the both the respective governments okay clear so this is the you know the russia's response the most important question is what is exactly the india's response to this crisis so india being a responsible global power one of the global power now in the 21st century in the second decade the the what is exactly the india's response india's response is also being mattered right and being monitored and observed everywhere and it is being considered as one of the important country and response of the india's is that uh, is being factored in the foreign policy of the india's foreign policy with all other countries the first thing is during cold war what was the india stand india stand was india did not join joined neither of the alliances it followed a policy called as a non aligned movement non aligned movement is complete neutral stand did not choose the this group versus that group what it chooses it thought that we have to be friendly with every country for the benefit of our country's growth okay for country's development we have to be friendly with nato grouping or even the 
USSR group. So that's what India had done. That India's foreign policy is traditionally not aligned. Even after disintegration of USSR, even after the LPG reforms in India, we have continuously followed a non-aligned policy. Okay, non-aligned foreign policy rather than supporting one country versus another country. We are trying to get benefited with every country's friendship. That is what is India's foreign policy. Okay, so as part of it, you can see that India, what it mentioned is specifically against to this crisis that it has suggested, it has suggested that all the member countries, especially the countries which are fighting war, they should recognize that they, they should give due importance to. There is United Nations Charter, international law, which is accepted by the, all the world countries, right? And respecting for the sovereignty of sovereignty means independence of you know every country every other country should, you know every country should respect the independence of other country india should respect the independence of pakistan and you know china china should respect the same thing india's and pakistan also should respect india's right so that is respect for sovereignty and uh, that means respect for sovereignty means you never dare to enter into the other country's borders without the permission of the given other country's government and another thing is territorial integrity. Territorial integrity means that territorial borders should be, you know, the borders should be accepted by all the countries which are sharing that border. So that is called territorial integrity. Nobody can violate those borders unilaterally, like Russia did now. Okay. And all members should honor these principles in finding a constructive way forward. So that means here the India did not criticize the Russia as an aggressor or neither Russia, you know, India did not support the Ukraine explicitly. It has talked something middle path and a diplomatic way, neither, you know, criticizing Russia nor supporting, nor supporting the Ukraine. Why India did not criticize the Russia clearly knowing that Russia is an aggressor here? It is because India, Russia is a long lasting and time tested friend of India in the past during the Cold War time also. Okay. And uh, the, in, you know, as part of this neutral stand, what I know the Russia, India did is there were three resolutions that uh, passed in the United Nations condemning the Russia's aggression in the Ukraine. And in all those, you know, the votings, India did not vote in support of the the resolution or did not oppose the given resolution but it had taken a neutral stand it abstained in voting process and it happened not only once three times till now it has abstained and not only that in recently united nation you know the general assembly has passed in a, a resolution to suspend russia from human rights council because of the human rights violations happened in the large number of civilian killings happened in a place called as bucha in this place, the actually in any war, a military person should be killing only the military person. Non-military people, civilians should not be killed or harmed. But here in this, you know, in this place, lot of civilians has been, you know, has been killed, and uh, and because of it, you can see there was a huge human rights violation. And the United Nations, uh, Russia, which is which is a member in the United Nations Human Rights Council, the now the membership has been removed and in this process during the voting process again here india abstained in the voting process neither support neither oppose okay and another more important thing is we have a huge dependence you know the some of the dependence on the you know the imports okay the imports is at present the oil is becoming you know in international market is it is very costly the traditional market that we do import from the kuwait iraq Saudi Arabia, this coil has been, you know, this oil has become too costly. And because of this costly, you can see in the domestic also, in the domestic economy also, the oil prices has increased. But other side, the Russian oil, where the demand for the Russian oil is decreased because US stopped importing and the uh, European Union is cutting down, the UK is also cutting down. So that means the for the Russian oil, the demand is decreasing, but supply is same. So that is why the Russian oil, prior Russian oil, we are getting at a cheaper cost. So that here India want to get a benefit out of it because here the traditional market we are paying heavy and if you import from Russia, we can get it at a lower cost. Okay. So that is why here the, the benefit of having, you know, the Russia's friendship again, even during this time will be benefited for us. And another thing more importantly, the time tested friend, especially from the defense point of view and also from the diplomatic point of view. The defense point of view, if you see, 
during cold war time this was the country which were continuously supporting all the india's endeavors in the era united nation and another thing you can see the total arms imports that india used to make right from the world countries most 70% of the imports used to come from only one country called as russia that means russia was continuously supporting india's defense and now at present we diversified that portfolio because we started importing from usa france and all other countries and that is why the total share of all arms that we are importing is decreased to 49% from 70% but even now we can see 50% of the defense equipment we are still importing from russia so such a crucial defense partner and another thing is the latest you know the defense system that is s400 missile those are called advanced missile system and this is we are in need of this missile system because of the threat we are facing specifically from the china and also from the pakistan pakistan china is continuously in possession of india's land in the galwan valley so and uh, it is been almost more than one and a half year still china is not vacating from that place and this is where you can see that aggressions you know china is becoming an aggressor about towards the india so during this time we need a stronger defense a deterrent system so that's why we need this particular missile right so for this one the you know the these missiles are going to be the finally delivered to india in the coming months so during this time india do not want any of this kind of you know the responses toward you know the unfriendly uh, actions towards the russia and diplomatically in the you know the most many of the times moscow has vetoed the you know vetoed ans united nations security council resolutions on the this you know the kashmir okay so in the past in 1950 there was a resolution passed in the nsc by the uh, us and the uk saying that that kashmir should become should be an international issue which should be resolved by the united nations that cannot be resolved by the bilaterally by india and pakistan that was a resolution but that was vetoed by the moscow saying that that cannot be an international issue it is a bilateral issue let them take care of india and pakistan will resolve that issue okay so likewise you can see here india even now it is clearly following its independent strategy foreign policy not being you know even though india is more close now to the western countries like us uk australia and france we are more closer to those countries and our foreign policy is uh, in the latest foreign policy if you see especially post 2014 our interaction our interact our interaction and dependence on the western countries is increased and we are almost become a virtual ally to those countries but even then during this present crisis we did not follow what you know the the what is the stand taken by these western countries even though they are now the the best partners of india's foreign you know in india's foreign policy so that independent for you know strategy of non alignment right india is following even now also and india's reaction to this particular invasion is specifically by looking at the the needs and demands of the the present indian government and indian society okay clear so this is the end of this particular talk